This Holy Week, we've been thinking about the sounds of Easter. And it's inspired in part by the hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. And if you missed Jodie's talk on Palm Sunday, do go back and watch that because she explains the story of that hymn and just the wonderful experience of grace that the author of that received. And so today on this Good Friday, we're going to go back and think about the sounds when Jesus laid down his life. So if you will, come back with me to that day. And so it begins, all those years ago, the journey from life to death and death to life. The torture commences as Jesus is flogged. The humiliating punishment that Pilate orders. The crack of the whip as it cuts through the air and the body is beaten the many strands lacerating skin with every blow. Pilate presents this battered man to the crowds, hoping enough has been done to placate them. But the cries of the crowd ring out. Crucify him, crucify him. Crucify this man who breaks our laws. Crucify this man who eats with sinners. Crucify this man who befriends the outcast. Crucify this man who preaches of an upside down kingdom. Crucify this man. And with that, Jesus takes up his cross on his already devastated body and begins the walk to Golgotha. The walk of shame, the jeering, the spitting, the agony. He carries his cross and yet carries too a far greater weight. The weight of a fallen humanity, the weight of sin, the war, the abuse, the murder, the inequality and injustice, the foul mouths and bad tempers, the lies, the broken promises, the theft and the oppression the loss, the disappointment, and the doubt, the sickness, and the sadness. He carries it all to Golgotha. Knowing his mission, he sees around him those that torment him still, the hammering of nails, not to build, but to destroy. The ironic truth of a mocking sign. The king of the Jews, he hears them cry. The crown of thorns and lots drawn for his robe. Naked he hangs, the anguish and the abandonment. Yet he forgives them still. Amongst the ridicule there is weeping too the groans of a mother's breaking heart, the longing looks that words could never express, and the fear of those who knew him best. I wonder, where am I in this crowd? What cry does my voice carry? As he hangs, gasping for breath, and the crowds start to disperse, The time has come to breathe his last and let his broken body rest. And yet, there is one more sound to hear. The final cry is his alone, loud and clear. The final words of a dying man echoing into eternity. It is finished. Heaven has spoken. The debt of sin has been paid in full. No more is owed, no more need be added. The final sacrifice has accomplished what we never could. All authority in heaven is held in those three words. It is finished. 
the mission was complete and it would continue to be complete forevermore. In those three words, he speaks so much. Do you hear it? I love you beyond measure. You are free. I've paid for you. Nothing left to owe. No way to earn it. It's my free gift to you. You are beautiful. I endured the cross for you. You have purpose and value and hope. And I just love you. Come home with me for eternity. Jesus suffered the most humiliating, painful death imaginable. And it came as no surprise to him. He tells his disciples in Matthew chapter 20, they will condemn him to death and they will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And many centuries before this, we read in Isaiah chapter 3, the famous passage of the suffering servant, that he'll be pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And yet by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus himself, being fully human, wrestled with what he knew was being asked of him. He sweats blood in the garden of Gethsemane, only too aware of the nature of the death he will die. And yet he is still able to say, not my will, but yours. Philippians 2 also tells us he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Why? Because of the vast, unconditional, unending love of God. As the Roman form of execution, many thousands would have died in this way under Roman rule. But it's this one death that 2,000 years later we remember. Good Friday and the resurrection changed the world forever. Why? Because it changed the course of human history. It reconciled a lost world to the father of all creation. Under Jewish law, sin had to be atoned for by sacrifice. People would take their animal offerings to the altar in the temple. And once a year on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would go behind the curtain into the Holy of Holies to repent and atone on behalf of the people. But on Good Friday, this changed forever. Matthew chapter 27 describes how the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom as Jesus died. When Jesus, our high priest, became the sacrificial lamb, the way to God was opened, available to anyone who wished to come. The final perfect sacrifice had been made. No more was required. Anyone who's been with someone as their earthly life comes to an end will know that their last words hold such weight and value. And Jesus knew exactly the significance of his last words. It is finished. They were not words of defeat or surrender, but words of victory. The translation of the Greek word finished literally means paid in full. Our debt was paid in full on that day so that the way to God could be open to all. Jesus conquered death that we might live, as Paul suggests, as more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Good Friday dealt with our sins. We are forgiven. We are released from guilt and shame for there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are redeemed in the most costly and beautiful exchange and most wonderfully our future is secure. Not that we will never sin again but that the completed work of the cross goes on being completed. The tense in which the word finished was written meant that it was complete but would also go on being completed. That as we continue to work out our salvation, we are continually forgiven and made new. For his mercies are new every morning. 
Ultimately, our future will be one of resurrected life with him. Because whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Our reading today was from the Gospel of John, but like many of the other events in Jesus' life, the crucifixion is recorded in the different Gospels, and they each have something to reveal to us about the moments in Jesus' life. One of the things I find helpful is to look across at the Gospels at who else is impacted, and who was impacted on that first Good Friday. In Matthew 27, we read of the centurion, who felt the earth shake as Jesus died and proclaimed, surely he was the son of God. And Luke chapter three records the two robbers who were crucified with Jesus, with one recognizing who Jesus truly was. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Following his death, Mark chapter 15 tells us of Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the Jewish council who finds the courage to step forward and bury the body of Jesus, his Lord. You see, Jesus' death was for everyone. Whether they were part of the powerful Roman Empire, whether they were wealthy and influential, or whether they had lost their way and committed crimes considered worthy of death, Jesus reveals himself and redeems them all. There was no one too rich, too powerful, or too lost for Jesus. Not then, and not now. Good Friday was God's free gift to us. Free, but not cheap. God's grace cost him dearly, but it was a price he deemed worth paying for you and for me. The same Jesus that gave up his life all those years ago and conquered death is the same Jesus at work in the world today. The same power and the same longing to see us restored in relationship to the Father. We can come to the cross today, whether it's for the very first time or whether we've been here many times before, with the knowledge that it is finished. The price is paid in full and we are loved by the Father. And so among the many sounds of Good Friday, among the whipping and the weeping, there is a different sound, the sound of grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my saviour, has ransomed me.